It has been a minute since I made a video, so it's been a busy start to 2024 for me. We, um, we had a baby on the 23rd of December. Um, we had a massive storm that rolled through this area on the 25th, so Christmas Day. And that night it um, took out power. Power was down for 13 days, took out internet. Internet was down for close to a month. Um, it took out all the phone reception, so we couldn't do like 4G, 5G internet or anything. Um, we had branches from trees falling on the house. We had trees in the backyard that all needed cleaning up. So it was a pretty, pretty dramatic start to 2024. Um, when it was all said and done, power come back. We had a power surge that broke my 48 port Cisco switch. And um, I unplugged it, plugged it back in to, to see if it would start back up, which made a pretty loud bang and everything connected to the switch also died. So the Dell R710, um, a couple of Raspberry Pis, the dock on my desk, my router, anything that was plugged into the switch basically was impacted by that. So I had to get a new Unify switch, got a Unify 24 port PoE switch there now, uh, a new router, um, and yeah, obviously I don't have Sova, so we are doing HomeLab 3.0 today. So for HomeLab 3.0, I have got myself a Lenovo Think Center. Just brought it off eBay. Um, I'll find a link to basically what I brought. So I got a Think Center with 32 gig of RAM and an i5, which is is pretty good for running single node OpenShift. And I'm just going to see how that goes for a while. Um, if it ends up being a good solution, maybe I'll get another couple of these and I'll just use the Think Centers instead of you know, running a, a Dell R710. Hopefully that will decrease my power bill as well. Obviously it's pretty expensive to run an, an R710 all the time. So here's what I got. So I just got one of these little things. Um, this one's got 16 gig of RAM, but the one I brought was 32 gig of RAM with an i5. And so far it's doing pretty good. So I thought I would take some time today to go over what um, what my home lab 3.0 looks like now that we don't have a server. So we're going to walk through installing single node OpenShift, but we're going to do it with OKD. So the only docs available are the, actually the OpenShift docs here. But we'll just use these and substitute the, the various OpenShift components for OKD components like Fedora Core OS, for example. So what we do, we're not going to do this assisted install away, we're going to do it this way. So installing single node OpenShift manually. So we basically do what it's suggesting here. We download the client tools, etc. Uh, we download the OpenShift install um, binary, and then we're going to download the ISO. So let's just switch over to iTerm. So I just downloaded that ISO. So if you've got the OpenShift install binary, you can just run this command here, OpenShift install CoreOS print stream JSON, and then you can pull out the location of the ISO you want. So in my case, that has now downloaded this ISO here, and that's the one we're gonna deploy this lab from. So normally when you're doing this kind of install, you would generate the um, ignition configs, you would boot from the CoreOS ISO and then you would do like CoreOS install, I install and run the, on the command line. When we're doing single node, what we want to do is actually modify that ISO and embed the ignition file into the ISO. So we'll just switch back to the web browser here and we'll keep reading through this. So we prepare an install config YAML. So what we do in this is we just set replicas for workers to zero and the control plane, we need to set replicas to one. And the other important thing in, in this file is we need to set an installation disk. Now, in my case, because it's a, just a little thing center, it's only got one disk in it, I just went with dev SDA. But if you're doing this on like an actual edge node that you're going to deploy at an edge site somewhere or, you know, something more beefy than a thing center with multiple disks, then you would probably want to do this disk by ID. So we'll, we'll take a look at my little thing center device. So this is the, the thing center device that I got. So we do OS dev. So we can see we've got SDA and SDB. The SDB is just the uh, flash drive that's been left in there. So you can see the SDB is just a flash drive, 16 gig. That's the one that had the Core OS ISO on it. And this is the actual disk we wanted to install to. So we just use the, the dev SDA. So if we're doing this on a node with multiple disks, then we would run, want to run a command like this. 
and just see what disks we have available. So we can see here that we've got one on, on this SCSI device that is mapped to dev SDA. So that's the idea we want for our install config file, right? Um, in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to do this in a, in a VM. So I'm not going to worry about that for now. What I'm going to do is just copy my install config file to here. Okay, so this will be our install config file. So here we can see I've set our masters to one and I have set this bootstrap in place installation disk to dev SDA. This pull secret is not valid, so I've edited that so it's not a valid pull secret. But if you do have a pull secret, if you are a Red Hat customer and you have a valid pull secret, you can add that here and then install operators from the Red Hat operators catalog. If not, you can put the fake pull secret in there, that's fine. And then I've just added my SSH key. So this is all we need for our single node OpenShift. So we'll go and save that and we will go back to the documentation here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a directory called OCP. Let's just, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just make a directory called OCP. We'll, we'll do OKD in our case. And we will copy that install config file into OKD. And then we'll just run this command. Oh, we've got to change to OKD. Okay, so now in our OKD directory, we have our bootstrap in place um, ignition file. So if we cut that, see it just looks like a normal ignition file. It's JSON, we can do JQ. Have a look at it in a bit more sensical way. So what this is going to do, so what this will do is it will boot from the ISO and it will immediately run all these things and install it onto dev SDA and then reboot the node. So that's where it's different to um, the CoreOS installer, like I mentioned at the start, where you would boot from the ISO and then you would just run the CoreOS installer install command. That wouldn't work in this case because this ignition file is expecting to be running separate from the disk it's going to install to. So if you try and do that, it will come up and say dev SDA is in use and it can't do the install. You could probably do it to a different disk, like if you wanted to run it on SDB, but that, it's just way more complicated than it needs to be. So we'll keep following the steps here. So we can see we have a podman command here, so I just need to make sure I have podman machine running. I do. So we're going to copy this command here. So this alias is our CoreOS installer command to a command that's going to run Podman. It's going to mount all the things it needs. I don't know if this is going to work on a MacBook, but, but we'll find out. And then we will run this command, but we need to change some things. So we're going to do KD, and we don't have a rel CoreOS ISO. We have a Fedora CoreOS ISO. So let's just see if it works. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll run it on Linux. Okay, so over here on Fedora now, we're going to run those commands again. So we've aliased our CoreOS command and we need to edit these. So that will be Fedora CoreOS and this one here will be OKD. So we'll run that again. So this is going to uh, pull that container. It's going to run the CoreOS installer command inside the ISO to install the ignition file and then we will be able to boot VMs off of this ISO and it will be embedded with that ignition file and it will start configuring the um, single node OpenShift node for us. So we'll take a look at that in just a minute. We'll wait for this to finish. I'll fast forward through this and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so that has finished there now. So it's written that to disk. So let's just SCP that Fedora CoreOS ISO. Actually, let's double check there's nothing else I needed to do. All right, so just transferring that uh, ISO back to myself now. So we've embedded the ignition file into the ISO. In this case, I'm using a, an, um, an ARM architecture ISO because I'm going to run it on a MacBook. But you would need to use an x86 one if you wanted to um, if you wanted to deploy this on an x86 architecture device. So we've deployed, we've copied that um, ISO back now. So let's go and create a, B, a VM. So. We need to create a new VM now. Okay, so I don't think this will actually work because I don't think um, OKD has an ARM release that this will work for. But let's see. So we'll create a VM. We want to customize the settings. We'll call this um, Snow um, OK 
HKD. So we'll just give it um, 8 gig of RAM. And we've got four processors. Um, disk, so. We want SATA. We'll make this 60 gig. Why? Um, I think that's all we want. So we're here. Okay, let's start it up. So we'll see the difference here is that we don't land in a Fedora Core OS live environment. We actually boot into Fedora Core OS. We'll get an IP address and then from there we should be able to SSH into the node. So it's been given an IP address 172.16.66.130. So we go back here, we do H core. Um, that's fine, yeah, that's fine. Core at 172.16.66.130. Okay, so now we're logged in. Now I think this will probably have DNS issues, so we'll just do a quick. Yeah, that's not going to work. NS160. Okay. Alright, now we will follow along the logs. I think this will probably try and pull an x86 image, and that will actually fail. But, I mean, this, this is the point of the video. This is where we get to. It will complete an installation from here. And this is how I set up my, my Think Center um, device. So I just let this run to completion and then I was able to access OpenShift like usual. So we open another tab here. We see you get nodes. We can see that I just have a single node here. So just the single node. And I'm currently running 4.15. Yeah, so I'm not too sure if we have release images for ARM. I'll have to I'll have to look into that. But um, at this point, this just does the normal bootstrapping um, stuff, and then it installs to Dev SDA. Let's just check that I have Dev SDA. Yeah, so it'll install to Dev SDA. The node will reboot, and then you'll have OpenShift up and running from that point. So it's it's pretty easy. It's pretty cool. So far, the single node has been able to do everything that I've needed to do. So I'm just hosting Unify on here, for example, just the usual things that I have in my, my home lab. Um, and I will also deploy the OpenStack operators here to test them, like running cuddle tests, for example. This is the environment I use. And then for anything more heavy duty than this, I'm using my Metal Cubed deployment that I have on a, on a server running at work. That's all I've got for you today. I'm sorry I couldn't show an actual deployment. I don't have a server to run an x86 VM on right now. But um, I found single node OKD to be really cool at the moment. Um, it's obviously low power, much lower power than what my server was. It's very quiet. There's just no noise in here whatsoever anymore. No background server noise that you can hear in these videos. So yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. And if it kind of fills the purpose, I might get a few more of these little think centers, maybe just two more to start with and then have a proper cluster. But at the moment, I can do everything I need to do from a testing operator's perspective on this single node. And then anything bigger that I'm trying to do, I'm using my Metal Cube deployment that runs on a server at work. So yeah, this is HomeLab 3.0. So if anything else comes out of it, if I um, start adding compute nodes for OpenShift, um, compute nodes for OpenShift or OpenStack or anything like that, I'll obviously make an update video, but hopefully it's enjoyable. Hopefully it was something a little left field. And um, yeah, if, Hopefully it's more accessible too for you know people that don't want to run a full server in their house. This is a pretty cheap option. It's like 200 bucks and it, it's performing perfectly. So maybe something you can do in your home lab. Let me know.